You probably haven't heard about this, but last Friday, a two-day event wrapped in Hungary, and this was CPAC Hungary. Now, you likely haven't heard about this event because a lot of media outlets were not allowed to attend. We're talking about American media outlets like Vox, AP, Rolling Stone, although some did get access, such as CBS News, so it seemed relatively arbitrary. But if you know any, anything about Viktor Orban, well, he is very, very authoritarian, and he cracks down on freedom of the press. Now, what's interesting is that this was essentially... A conference on how to become an authoritarian. It was like an authoritarianism one-on-one -on -one class with Viktor Orban as the keynote speaker, obviously. And that really shouldn't surprise anyone who knows a thing or two about Viktor Orban. But what should be startling to Americans is the fact that you have American conservative leaders here at this event not only endorsing this message, essentially, but speaking at this very event. Now, the event laid out the blueprint as to how you can crush democracy in your country, and it really stems from your ability and power to stifle the media. So this is something that uh, I've talked about on the show about the encroaching authoritarianism that we see in this country stemming from the GOP, but this conference right here and the, the attendance of the conservative thought leader in America, Tucker Carlson, and its political leader, Donald Trump, should startle everyone who cares about democracy, including conservatives too. So Alex Griffin of Mediaite explains, Orban, who gave the keynote address at CPAC Hungary on Thursday, has stifled freedom of the press during his 12 years in power. Orban won re-election to a fourth consecutive term in April, making him the longest-serving leader in the EU and the candidate he defeated, who was supported by every opposition party in the country, complained during the campaign he was allowed only five minutes on public television to state his case against Orban. Orban spoke openly about the importance of controlling the media while addressing CPAC and encouraged the Americans and right-wing European leaders in attendance to follow his path. Have your own media. It's the only way to point out the insanity of the progressive left, Orban told his audience. We have to take back the institutions in Washington and Brussels. We must find allies in one another and coordinate the movements of our troops, he added. Orban's comments, coupled with his domestic crackdown on critics, should serve as a warning for every American that CPAC is moving away from the First Amendment and has little use for public debate or freedom of the press. Orban went on to praise Fox News's Tucker Carlson, who has broadcast his show before from Budapest and who introduced Orban with a short video message to the conference. Of course, the GOP has its media allies, but they can't compete with the mainstream liberal media. My friend Tucker Carlson is the only one who puts himself out there, Orban added. His show is the most popular. What does it mean? It means programs like his should be broadcasted day and night, or as you say, 24-7. So you have the most popular news broadcaster in the country, in America introducing this authoritarian leader in Hungary. You have Donald Trump at this event talking about how wonderful Viktor Orban is and how close they are. I need you to just try to grapple with the implications of this. You have Tucker Carlson selling his viewers on the things that Orban espouses, such as the Great Replacement Theory. Viktor Orban believes this, says it all the time. Part of his shtick is racial antagonism and cracking down on marginalized communities, not just LGBTQ plus people, but Jewish people as well. And, you know, Donald Trump could very well become the president again in 2024. And at this specific event, they were talking about how to crush democracy and silence the media. Was Trump taking notes? Was Trump honestly like there trying to soak all of this in? Assuming he gets elected again, you know, thinking about how he's going to carry this all out, it's um, it's it's startling. But in order to understand why Viktor Orban is so bad, it stems from the way he was able to consolidate power. And he did this by effectively weaponizing hate. Orban took his oath of office a few days before addressing the conference and echoed the controversial replacement theory linked to deadly mass shooting across the United States from El Paso to Pittsburgh to most recently Buffalo. Echoing another popular theme on the American right, he argued that another form of cultural suicide was gender badness, a reference to the spread of LGBTQ plus rights in the West, reported The Guardian last week. Attacking the LGBTQ plus community in Hungary has been a key ingredient of Orban's rise to power and his Christian nationalist policy 
policies. Freedom House explains further the details of Hungary's anti-LGBTQ policies, which bear a striking resemblance to the recent legislation passed by Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida. A June 2021 law banned the discussion of gender and sexual diversity in schools, the media, advertising, and other public spaces. The legislation, which conflates pedophilia with homosexuality and expressions of gender identity, was challenged by a European Commission infringement procedure in July. The government also initiated a referendum on further limiting LGBT plus representation in education scheduled for 2022, the organization notes, previewing the next step of Orban's program to expel LGBTQ teachers from the education system. So the way that Viktor Orban was able to consolidate power and kill democracy in Hungary is the exact same way that Republicans are consolidating power and trying to kill democracy in the United States, and they're even using the same messaging. Viktor Orban is saying, oh, well, we have to ban gender expression and, you know, discussions of sexuality in the classroom because homosexuals are pedophiles. And what do we hear coming from the far right in the United States? Gays are groomers. They're groomers. They want to groom children. I was just called a groomer yesterday in the comment section of my YouTube channel because I defended trans rights. So this is the playbook and they're using it. And it's not just LGBTQ plus people who's the target of Viktor Orban. In fact, a disgusting anti-Semite who called Jewish people stinking excrement was invited to speak at this very event. And Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson, the most prominent leaders in the American conservative movement, are at this event endorsing what he's saying, the ways in which you kill democracy in your country. Just do what I'm doing. And they're listening. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. So um, one last thing that I want to say about CPAC is take a guess as to where the next CPAC is going to be held in June. Just, just guess. In Brazil. Where you have another fascistic leader, Jair Bolsonaro there, who's trying to consolidate power and he's weaponizing hatred in order to become more popular. So I need everyone to understand what we're witnessing, what we're all witnessing around the world. This is very serious. We are witnessing the formation of an international fascist movement. This is the recruitment period. This is them forming alliances based on their fascistic ideology, based on consolidating power, based on killing democracy. And what Viktor Orban did in Hungary can be accomplished in America. They're already executing the blueprint, and it's working. If you look at Florida with the Don't Say Gay law that Ron DeSantis perhaps copied from Viktor Orban, well, it's incredibly popular. Americans are falling for it hook, line, and sinker, including Democrats. So the fascist playbook is literally working. And we're just not talking about this in the United States. If Donald Trump were to become the Republican Party nominee in 2024, which is very likely at this point in time, imagine what he could do. Stop for a second and imagine that he became the Republican Party nominee and lost. Imagine what he'd say. It was stolen from me again. Imagine how much more violence that would catalyze. But imagine if he won and how horrifying that would be. Because he stated before, jokingly, that he wants to run again and again and again. And if you think he was joking, well, I've got news for you. He wasn't. And Donald Trump is too stupid himself to actually pull off any sort of change. He kind of just did it on accident, for the most part. He had people around him who were enabling him, who helped execute his agenda, like Mitch McConnell and people in his, his staff. But now he's aligned with Viktor Orban an authoritarian who created a blueprint to turn democracies into illiberal regimes. And now Trump could just copy that. Tucker Carlson, he's taking everything from Viktor Orban and, and sharing it to millions of people. Millions and millions of people. Great replacement theory. And guess what? Six in ten Trump voters actually believe in the core tenant of the Great Replacement Theory. That was from a poll that was just released. So I'm gonna say it again. I don't wanna be redundant, but I think that this really is worth emphasizing and I don't think that people have processed this yet, but get it through your head. What we are witnessing right now is the formation of a global fascist movement. The American conservative movement is no longer a conservative project. It is an explicitly fascistic project. They are hellbent on killing democracy because that's what we've seen them do. 
curtailing freedom of speech while claiming they support freedom of speech, claiming to care about democracy while attacking democracy. This is all out of the fascist playbook. If you haven't already, read Jason Stanley's How Fascism Works. We're seeing fascism form right before our very eyes, and currently, we're still in that proto-fascist period. It's starting to transition in the United States where the fascists are becoming more and more violent. But before long, this will be a full-blown, violent, global fascist movement. The time to wake up is right now and acknowledge what's happening. And the fact that people didn't know that this event took place shows that a lot of us are asleep at the wheel. Don't be asleep at the wheel. Understand what's happening and know it's fascism. And don't be afraid to call it what it is. This is fascism. And it's right here in the United States currently. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Cause Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today folks, you won't regret it.